Hey there, fellows. Okay, so we're filming this one during the winter time, right? Yes, the spring is just around the corner, but it's still winter with everything that ensues. Snow, ice, a car that's more difficult to control, with there essentially being no pavement on the road. Well, I mean, it is there, but it's just very slippery. And when you've got an older car like this one that isn't equipped with ABS... Anyway, so the idea is to set up a makeshift anti-lock braking system. One that would contain the bare minimum of electronic components and everything else. I don't even think we'll be running any because, well, look. We gave it a bit of thought and here's an easy way we can set it all up. Right here I have a couple of starter motors, a camshaft, and as for what we'll be doing with all of it, well, in our minds, for example, you can take the brake cylinder rod, space it out a bit further, set up a mounting solution, fit some sort of flag to the rod, grab a starter motor, weld on a lobe from the camshaft, and that would end you up with... You connect everything in such a way so that under hard braking the mechanism starts to rotate and pushes the pedal back out. So that's one possible way of doing it. That would allow you to set everything up quickly. And what shape this actually takes, we'll see during assembly. So let's make a DIY anti-lock braking system right here in the garage that would be 107% functional, as our calculations and brainstorming would lead us to believe. Okay, let's do this. We set up anti-lock brakes based on a starter motor. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Let me show you what we've cooked up here. We'll get to this in a minute, but here's what's interesting. We fitted a switch to the brake pedal, which we've adjusted according to pedal travel. That trips a relay and that in turn sends power to this here starter motor. So the starter motor spins at a pretty high rate of speed, which is why we had to grab another reduction gear starter motor, tear it apart and borrow its reduction gear. That way it's not going to be spinning so fast. In order for the pedal to be pushed back, basically so that the interval would be such that you could keep the pedal pressed down with your foot for the brakes to actually work. Now, the mechanism itself is very straightforward. We have a starter motor, the second reduction gear, which reduces the rotational speed. We've slightly moved the brake cylinder forward, welded a support onto the rod, and a cam lobe to the reduction gear. That will be temporarily knocking the brake pedal back, slightly reducing the pressure inside the brake system. The pads will loosen their grip and allow the wheel to rotate. So as you can see, it's pretty much like your normal ABS. Just very ghetto and simplistic. And now we get to the interesting part. Now we are ready to take this outside, but I do think we should try this out in here first. This is a fairly grippy surface. No snow, no ice. So go ahead and back up, and we'll see what we've got here. It works! Let's do that again.
Okay, now that was a great representation. One more time. Okay guys, we've tried this out on the concrete surface, everything works fine, and now it's time to take this outside, where we've got snow, ice, and all of that slippery stuff. We're driving a car is a struggle, so let's go outside and put the car through its paces on a slippery surface. Let's go! Excellent. Excellent. It works brilliantly. So at the end of the day, well, this is quite interesting. This seems like a simple enough system. There's really nothing complicated to it. You pretty much just need an electric motor, which has to have a bit of power though. Also a reduction gear to keep the revs down, a lobe rod extension, and you'll have a system that works pretty decently actually. Now what's really interesting is that you can press down on the pedal really hard, like in a scenario when something comes up ahead of you suddenly. But with this sort of power and the reduction, the lobe is able to exert enough force to push back against your foot on the pedal. The pressure is going to drop and the wheel is going to rotate slightly. Granted, it might not work like a um, traditional system per se, where you've got electronics, a dedicated pump that keeps everything in check. The important thing here is that we've made a makeshift system that actually works. So yeah, this very much works, try it if you don't believe us. And yeah, this was a pretty cool experiment. If this system is something you're lacking, well, we've made the prototype. I mean, yeah, you can sort of package all of this a bit better, but we were working with what we had and that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.